Hi everyone, my name is Steve Frechette and I'm the Assistant Professor of Cybersecurity here at Bristol Community College and I wanted to share with you a teaching tip on how to white label content for reuse. One of the things that I've learned over the last 12 months, especially teaching during the pandemic, is the need to reuse content. And one of the challenges is when you record your content, you're recording it into a static presentation and it's very difficult to extract that content once you've mixed it down using a mixing processor that creates an mp4 that you can upload to YouTube or to the Blackboard site. So what I'm going to show you is how to prepare a presentation that uses a blank screen and then you can overlay a content image on it so that you can create a presentation that you can reuse in many different settings or you can capture a certain topic and then use that topic over again in a future course as a refreshing topic. So without further ado, let's jump into the presentation. Now, when I used to create presentations, I would use a format that you see here on the screen where I would have a week number, the course name, and the topic description and subtopics to be covered. And this is just the standard Bristol Community College PowerPoint layout that has been created for college use. Now, the problem being a teacher is that you lose all of this real estate right here due to this banner and you can't extract the banner without changing the PowerPoint presentation. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can actually go ahead and do that and retain all of the branding properties of the college itself, but yet have control over the content within that brand. So let's take a look at it. So when I do a presentation, I will usually create an agenda slide. I tell my students what I'm going to teach them. I tell them those things and then I recap what I told them. And it usually will follow this type of framework. Now, when I'm doing this, I will use these section headers as well. And also, I will use a subtopic such as this. Now, the one thing that you're going to notice is that I still have this banner with me all the time. And it makes sense if you're going to be doing presentations at Bristol Community College over and over and over again. The issue for me was that this bit of real estate right here is really important to me because being a technical professor, I have to draw lots and lots of diagrams and issue lots of content. So I need to maximize the screen as much as possible in order to deliver my lessons. Now, one thing you'll notice is that when I'm speaking to you, I'm usually speaking from the lower right corner of the screen and I'm always facing the content itself. Even though I'm looking at the camera, it appears that I'm actually looking at the screen, which gives it a nice effect. The problem is I'm not sure exactly where I need to place myself when I do my final recording and I process it into an mp4 file that I can upload on YouTube. Again, it's all about getting it into the final product and being able to use it over and over again rather than reinventing the wheel. And let me show you what I mean by that. Now what you see here on the screen is the same presentation with the branding removed. And now when I remove the branding, look at all the wonderful white space that presents itself. And it gives me so much more flexibility in terms of real estate to lay out the content in a way that makes sense and is optimized for the viewer's experience. Remember, a lot of your students and my students are going to be watching our presentations on their phones. So we have to be mindful of that little square real estate. So if we're clogging it up with branding, it's going to get noisy on the screen and you don't want that. You want optimization in terms of the real estate. Second of all, we want to be able to use some of this content again in other areas. Perhaps it's in an advanced course when you want to go back and teach somebody the same topic or refresh their memory. Like, for example, this is how we used to do this problem in calculus. So let's go and take a look at how we did that last semester. You don't want to have to reinvent the wheel every time because it takes a lot of time to really produce these high quality videos. And I know as an instructor, you are running into that too. So what I'd like to share with you is a technique that I developed in order to streamline the process. So this is an inside look to the slide master that I created. And if you come up here, view and slide master, you can see all of the things that I've laid out in order to help myself out. You'll notice that I created a color scheme for this particular layout that conforms to the college's colors, which are right here. And I just call them CIS coursework so that when I'm building something, I'm using the same color palettes that the college is using. The second thing you're going to notice is I have these guidelines in here in order to isolate where I want the brand to occur. So for example, I've isolated these little square areas between this guide right here 
in this guide in order to reserve that for some of the coloring and some of the detailed branding that I want to do. Now, for example, over here in the lower corner, you can see a square right here. This square is where I reserve my little spot for my picture. Now I record everything with a green screen behind me so I can make the background transparent and so I can overlay myself onto the content but I prefer to operate in this little box in the right hand corner because again I don't want to be in the center of the of the content I want to be off to the side I want the content itself to be what the student is watching they can look at me and they can hear me I want to be as far away from the screen but yet present at the same time and if I close out of this master view here you can see it just looks like a regular presentation in fact here's a diagram that I can use now and where I place it in the diagram as I'm recording the guidelines are there and it also gives me this option to like snap to the guidelines which is really useful I love this feature about PowerPoint and it just makes it so much easier because I don't ever have to worry about my picture being off the screen like this like PowerPoint will just snap it right in like this which I love so what you see on the screen right now is a video that I actually built on how to set up a Nessus vulnerability scanner that probably doesn't mean anything to you because this is like a cybersecurity thing but what you can see is how I used the branding down the bottom here so for example, I created an overlay image that I'm going to show you how this works. So for example, if you were in here and you wanted to edit this video file, you would come over here and you would click edit and it would open up the edit feature screen. Now you can see I've already laid the image on top of my presentation. So I've set up an overlay here that you can see on the screen for CIT 252, which is a course I teach called Critical Controls. But what I could do is I could simply add another image. I could come over here and overlay another image. And I've already created several images that I can use. And if I wanted to just make this part of the CIT 274 class, well, that's easy to do. All I've got to do is click on the image and it's going to overlay it. And now it instantly becomes CIT 274 capstone class. And if I pick it up, you can see that I can just tuck this guy right in here. So now I can come down here on my picture and I can click on it. And now I can begin actually moving it around because see, I know exactly where the border is now. So I can like tuck myself in and make it look like I'm right on top of this border, like almost like I'm sitting at a table. And I could do a lot of things with this. I could expand this out and make my picture really big if I wanted to like give myself like a big presence while I'm speaking. Or I prefer to just tuck myself in this little one and a half inch by one and a half inch square that I designed in the PowerPoint grid that I showed you a moment ago in the previous slide. Now once I save this video, it's going to process down into an MP4 file, which I store over here on my laptop. And you can see some of the lecture videos that I've already built. So here's the Nessa scanner video that I just was showing you. If I double click on this, you can see the final product. Hi everybody. So here's the video on how to set up a Nessus vulnerability scanner. I've got a couple of slides here and I'm going to walk you through the process of how you go about doing this. So when I come back to my diagram here, you can see how effective it can be and how much more real estate that you can gain. Instead of my picture being so high up on the screen, I can put it way down on the screen. Now the final thing I'd like to show you is how do you actually create an overlay. So creating an overlay is pretty simple. Now to create an overlay, you need to understand how big your screen is. So for me, my screen is 2560 by 1440 pixels. So the picture that I need to make has to match that size. So I do this in Photoshop. So I have a file out here called Screencast Overlay Master. Now what I do is I use this master file in order to create any overlay that I want. And it's very simple. I've got pretty much three layers here. I've got my base layer, with this, which is just a blank screen. I've got my, my border right here, which is in this box here. And I can just change this however I want. All I've got to do is select the layer where the text is, which is right here. I come over to the text screen and I can highlight this and I can change this to whatever I want. I can change the color right over here to I can rebrand this however I want to use it. I could white label it if I wanted to teach the Disney World employees down in Florida how to set up a vulnerability scanner. I could take this whole labeling out and I could put in a whole Disney feel to it and I wouldn't change the content at all. In fact, the content is already recorded. So I'm just reusing the content, which is 
a good use of your time and a good use of your resources. In other words, you should record your content once really, really well and hit all the, all the topics and all the high notes that you want to make sure that you get across to your students. And then once you do it and you're satisfied and you've already edited that video, you don't want to do it again. You want to just use it over and over again. And I found that I was saying the same thing over and over and it wasn't effective use of my time. So when I came up with this technique, it made it so much easier to actually create content, especially when I needed to talk about a subject that I've already spoken about. So using my own white spaced presentation format, it's much easier for me. You can tell all of the branding is removed. This is what my agenda looks like. This is what my section header looks like. This is my subtopic and these are my closing slides. Everything in here is all initiated by my guidelines. In fact, if I created, see these guidelines right here? If I created a new slide, notice that like my title fits right in the guidelines. So I don't ever have to worry about where my title is going to land. I've already hard coded that in my template design. So here's a quick recap. There is a better way to optimize your content for reuse through PowerPoint. It's sitting right on your desktop and it's not hard to use at all. And the tools that I use are PowerPoint, Screencast, and I've got a green screen behind me, and that's how I do my thing. So you can remove the branding colors in order to free up more space for more content. And it's important that you think about that because your students are probably watching your, the content that you're presenting to them on their phones. And so using Screencast, you can use image overlays created in PowerPoint matched to your screen size to provide a custom look and feel white labeling for content reuse, removing backgrounds, and repositioning content for mobile device usage. If you have any questions about anything or you want a copy of my PowerPoint master slide, simply email me at stephen.fraschette at bristolcc.edu. Thank you very much, and I hope you use this tip in your own presentations. Thank you for watching this edition of Bristol Community College Teaching Tips. Please come back to this channel for more videos, which will be updated in the future. And if you want more information, please come to the LASH Center for Teaching and Learning website for professional development opportunities and more teaching and learning resources. Thank you very much.